Last week, we hit 10,000 subscribers. So to celebrate, I'm going to attempt 10,000 putts. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs, and thank you all so much for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. Your support has surpassed even my wildest expectations. Now last year when we hit 5,000 subscribers, with the help of some of you and some of your favorite pros, we threw a disc 5,000 times. And while that was fun and we saw just how beat in a disc could get, we really want to see this time around if we can crunch some numbers. So I'm not just doing 10,000 putts to prove that I can. Anyone can put in enough time to just putt 10,000 times. No, I'm trying to get better, but I'm also trying to choose my next putter and learn to see if there are some differences between the putters that I'm going to use. To figure out how much better I get, we need to figure out how bad I already am. So let's go back in time to find out. Well, we're off to a rough start. 20% from about 26 feet, but that's our baseline. Hopefully it gets better over time and uh, we'll see where we finish. All right, so after that first round of putts, 25 putts with all five of the putters that I'm gonna use, my percentage was only 21%. Not great, but you might be wondering what putters I'm using. So let's take a look. The five putters I'll be using are all quite different. First up, we have the Infinite Discs Alpaca in N-Blend plastic. Now, if we decode that name, the Alpaca is basically an Innova AVR, and N-Blend is Infinite's version of Innova's Nexus plastic, which means this is a tacky, but stiff, beadless, deep putter, rated at 3301. Next, we have the old school classic Gateway Wizard in eraser plastic, rated at 2302, it is deep like the alpaca, but has a big bead, giving it a very different feel in the hand. The eraser plastic has the perfect mix of grip and durability. Next, we have a new take on an old classic, the Emac Judge. Rated at 2401, the Emac Judge is a retooled, shallower version of the Judge, but still slightly overstable. This one is in classic moonshine plastic, which is soft and tacky. The fourth putter I'll be using is the Discraft Challenger OS. I wanted to test out one of Discraft's putters, and I also wanted one that was expected to be more overstable, rated at 2303. This one is in their putter line hard, though frankly, it's not very hard. It also has a little micro bead. And finally, we have our stiffest and least overstable putter, the Axiom Pixel in electron firm plastic. Rated at 2400.5, it's stiff, but has plenty of grip thanks to the contrasting texture of the flight plate and overbolt rim. Now we're going to be keeping statistics on each of these putters so we know not only my overall putting percentage, but the individual putting percentages of these five putters compared to each other. Now a little bit more on these putters. I selected these five putters for very specific reasons. Firstly, we have a bunch of different plastics, soft, medium, firm, and varying levels of grip. We also have totally different shapes and designs, some big bead, small bead, micro bead, and beadless, but we also have different varying levels of depth, some deep putters, some shallow. I also selected these putters because I have varying levels of experience with each of them. The Gateway Wizard was one of the first putters I used for an extended period of time when I got back into disc golf in early 2020. The Alpaca was actually my putter of choice for about a year before I switched to something else. And to be completely transparent, the Pixel is the putter that I'd like to start using. While the two other putters, the Emac Judge and the Challenger OS, I have no specific interest or experience with either. Now, all of this introduces an interesting psychological element to this test. Which of these putters is gonna perform the best? Is it the one that I want to perform the best? Is it one that I'm indifferent toward? Is that sort of inherent bias going to contribute at all to the final putting percentages? We'll see. Now, there's also no use in doing this test and putting from a distance like 10 feet. I need to put myself in a position that's challenging. So those first 125 putts and all the rest to come will be done from about 27 feet. One other key variable to talk about is that this test is happening outdoors. As much as I would love to putt in a nice controlled environment, I think I'm probably gonna improve more by learning to putt in different wind conditions. 
and different levels of humidity or whatever. So we are outside in the elements. And as you're going to see, those elements do change quite a bit throughout this test. Oh, and also because I'm right on the back of my house on my porch, it's not entirely unusual to have a headwind at one side of the porch and a tailwind at the other and have them switching at random. So really presenting a decent challenge. Now, hopefully you've been following along with this process for the last four months and have already entered our mystery box giveaway because entries for that giveaway have now closed and the winners will be announced in this video. So without further ado, let's get in some putts and start crunching these numbers. Dog stops barking. So it took 126 sets of five putts before I made all five in one set. Hopefully we do it again in faster than that. All right, I'm out here on the back porch. Just finished the last couple sets. We are officially at 10% of the way through 1000 putts. Uh, a few things I've learned so far, uh, apparently I'm putting a lot of pressure on my, my back leg, my left leg that I'm pushing off of because my hip hurts after a few putts. So I'm going to have to start doing some stretches and workouts to reinforce that. Hopefully that gets better. Uh, but the real reason we want to check in at a thousand putts is to see where the stats are. So I'll put the stats up on screen now. We're actually seeing quite a bit of variation between the putters. Um, last night I did a set of 25 putts per disc and uh, I only made one with the Challenger OS. I can't really tell you why the Challenger OS is so far behind the rest, um, but it's only at 20% and it doesn't seem to be getting any better right now. Uh, I've already seen a noticeable improvement from when I was at around, you know, 500 putts. Uh, I think we were still around like 22%. So I feel like I've dialed in my form a little bit better now and I understand what I'm trying to do with the motion and the routine. The Alpaca is currently in the lead 29.5%, Wizard at 28.5%, Pixel 28, Judge 27. All those are kind of clumping up a little bit. I've had hot streaks with each of them. You know, at the moment, those biases or experiences with those discs don't seem to have any bearing at all on how I'm doing one tenth of the way through this. So uh, it's only February 8th. Hopefully uh, I can keep up with the number of subscribers we're adding and hopefully that pace continues. Um, I guess this is a good time for me to just say thank you so much for your support and for following our channel and everything that we're doing. So here's to 9,000 more putts. All right, last thing we need to do here at 1,000 putts is check in on the condition of these. Here is the Challenger OS. I think it's holding up pretty decent so far. So this is after 200 putts. We definitely got some pretty decent little gouges here. This is the biggest kind of piece that's been taken off. That's right on the bead. The firm plastic is really taking a beating here on the bottom of the rim. We've got some pretty deep kind of scuffs and gouges you can see there as I turn it around. Uh, and this eraser plastic I think is holding up pretty good. There's a little bit of a, a kind of gouge on the bead there. Next, we have a uh, Infinite Discs Alpaca. This is an N-Blend. This is a pretty good chunk right here on the rim and on the uh, right along the parting line. There's a couple of pretty big nicks there, but I think that this classic moonshine is taking the most beating. I mean, this looks way more used than the rest of the discs. It's almost like every single impact here has been logged on the rim. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> We're officially at 1,500 putts, and the statistics are looking pretty good. The overall percentage is now up to 30.93, so I'm already seeing some pretty significant improvement. Uh, we just announced the giveaway that's happening from this video two days ago, so it's, uh, let's see, February 10th already. Wow. Uh, to the three people so far that have guessed that my putting percentage was going to get worse, rude, 
I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, but you're obviously going to be wrong, thankfully. Uh, and I think the most important thing I've noticed so far for me is to fully extend my arm. So I'm really like reaching out to the basket and exaggerating that follow through. And every time I can like remember to do that and do it right, the putts seem to go in much more frequently. So significant improvement already. Let's keep on going. All right, it is February 16th. We're, we're at a total of 2,125 putts right now. That's 425 per disc. And I think this is the first time that I've really felt like I hit a ceiling or plateau of any kind. The, uh, I don't know, there was just something about the these two sets of uh, 125 putts. So I just got done doing 250 and I just like, I just wasn't feeling it. Um, I also didn't, didn't get much sleep the last two nights. So maybe that's contributing, but like, I both feel like I'm getting better, but that it's getting harder to get better. We are up to an average putting percentage of 31.72%, 11% or so better than where I started. So I'm happy about that 10% better. Um, but I still think there's a big improvement to come uh, and I will be disappointed if I don't bring the overall over 40 or 50% by the time I'm done with 10,000. So mark my words here, how I'm feeling today, I feel like I can get a lot better. The worst putter out of the group so far, still the Challenger OS. I think that's what it was about a thousand putts ago. Um, we got a dead heat for the best putter between everything else. So we'll see, we'll see if that deviates much more. It's been pretty variable. It's gone up and down a lot. Anyways, that's where we're at today, and we'll see where we're at next. Check in soon. Now, as I've been putting dates on some of these clips, you might be wondering, why did this take so long? Well, here's one thing. Well, conditions today are a little bit different, but the putts must go on. Putting in the snow is hard. <laughs> Woo. And here's another thing. So this picture doesn't really do it justice, but I slipped and fell while we were on a trip uh, at a state park. We were staying in a cabin and the steps were slippery. And uh, long story short, I had a bruise across my lower back that was about 16 inches long. Uh, I thought for sure I broke my arm when I landed about right here, but somehow I did not but I was pretty banged up. And so it took me a few weeks to get back to a point where I could get back into putting. But eventually we got back to the grind. Well, it is April 8th, happy eclipse day. Uh, it'll be a little bit later today, the eclipse. For now, it's just the sun up there. Uh, putting has been uh, difficult, weather's been terrible. It's been cold, we've had snow, we've had a bug flying in my camera. Uh, we've had multiple tornado warnings and thunderstorms and all kinds of stuff. So I'm trying to grind out as many putts as I can to get caught up here and uh, catch up to the subscriber count, which is a good problem to have, don't get me wrong. Uh, but some interesting things to note, you know, the Pixel was doing great. If you look at the stats uh, right now at about 3,750 putts total, the Pixel's fallen behind the Wizard by about 5%. It was tied with it for quite a while. So it's just been kind of up and down. The overall average percentage was steadily going up and we've kind of plateaued now. And I've been plateaued at kind of 33% for, feels like a month because I haven't been out here consistently, but there's still a lot of putts to go. So who knows where we'll finish up. Will your guess win the giveaway? I don't know, we'll find out soon. So stay tuned, here we go. So this is taking longer than we thought. I've been kind of talking about how we're gonna change things up here, but basically it's May 8th. We're about 400 subscribers away from 10,000. And I literally just now finished my 5,000th putt. Ooh, and I gotta go run packages out of the back. Whew, all right, we made it to the mail truck. 
So this last set of 125 putts was honestly one of my best so far. I think I finally kind of figured out the rhythm and technique that I like, but we are gonna change up how we're gonna do the last 5,000 putts because uh, if we don't, this is never gonna get done. So Greg's gonna explain that to you now. Before I talk about which putter I chose to keep using, let's take a moment to break down the data from 5,000 putts and choose our first giveaway winner. So after 1,000 putts each, the Pixel had the lowest percentage at 33.3%, with the Challenger OS only 0.1% higher at 33.4%. The Emac Judge came in with 34%, the Alpaca 346 and the wizard was statistically the best of the five at 35.8%. Now I had a lot of people asking me how I was actually doing these putts. So just to be clear, I used that stack of five and would just put all five in a row and then count up which ones went in and continue on to the next set. And a lot of people thought this might be disorienting because the putters were different shapes. And I think at first I noticed a lot how different they were, but over time, it didn't really seem to make a huge difference to me. I didn't notice it a lot in my hand. And by the end, there's only a two and a half percent difference between those five putters, narrowing from that original 10% almost difference. And I think that says a lot about how little it mattered with the way that I was doing the putts. I also had people asking if the stability of the putters had changed that much. And to be honest, I didn't really notice that either. Now, maybe if I went back and saw how much you know, how stable they were right at the beginning versus now, I might notice it a little bit more, but overall, not much change. Rather than what I saw, it was more about what I felt. I could very much feel how rough and jagged some parts of the rim were getting, and it definitely became a distraction. Instead of focusing on my putting routine, I was thinking like, oh, where, like, do I have my hand in a place that's comfortable? So after the first 5,000 putts, my overall putting percentage went from 21.6 at the beginning up to 34.22 or almost a 13% increase. Now I'm not sure if that percentage sounds good to you or not, but in raw numbers, I made 1,711 putts, but I also missed Three thousand two hundred and eighty nine putts. And let me tell you, missing that many putts is not very fun. But what is fun is giving away plastic. So let's talk about our first giveaway winner who, with the exact correct guess of thirty four point two two percent. Yes, to the decimal point, our winner is Jacob Zippel. Congratulations to you. You're going to receive a three disc mystery box of your choice from our website. Uh, shipped to your door. You will receive an email from us with instructions very soon. So those first 5,000 putts basically took three months and something had to change for the second 5,000. So I decided to choose one of those five putters to use for the second 5,000 putts. I had known for a while which putter I wanted to switch to and I put some in an order and thank goodness they came on time. Yep, as you might have been able to tell from the side and all those beautiful colors, I switched to the Pixel. So like I said at the beginning of this whole thing, I wanted to switch to the Pixel. And while the data definitely doesn't support that choice, seeing as it was statistically the worst of the five, there was still just something about the Pixel, the feel in the hand, the plastic. I just felt more comfortable with it, even though it didn't go in the most. Now, I think it's also really important to mention that the data snapshots that you're seeing at, you know, 1500, 2000, 3000, whatever, all these points in time only show part of the picture. In between those milestones, these putters were going back and forth and back and forth between which ones were best. And it just so happened that when we finished at 5000, the pixel was, you know, behind the rest. But if I had continued another thousand putts like that and checked every hundred putts or so, you would see those percentages flip flop places over and over. That and I ordered the pixels around 3000 putts when the pixel was second best. So yeah. Now with a stack of 15 putters in the same amount of time that it took me to do 125 putts, I could do 375 and really crank them out. Things started out pretty good. The first two sets were done while we were on vacation in Williamsburg, Virginia. 
and I clocked in a 40.3%, followed up with a 49.8, which is pretty wild how almost immediately my percentage went up by six to 15% just by using a stack of the same discs. We got back from that trip and just grinded out putts set after set to try and get this done. And it's fair to say after that strong start, things were a little up and down. That second round at 49.8% ended up as my second best set overall, but it was immediately followed up by my second worst set at just 36.26%. By far the best set of 375 I had came pretty much right in the middle. For the first time, I consistently made over half my putts, finishing at 53.06. And then soon after, we reached the statistical and emotional low point of this whole test. Round 12. Round 12 was brutal. It was hot. It was humid. The jagged rims were starting to hurt my finger. My elbow was hurting. And I was emotionally just ready to be done. And it showed with my lowest percentage at 35.2%, barely 1% better than where I finished after the first 5,000 putts. But I finished strong. Round 13, I put in a 40.47%, but I also knew I could do better. So we set up to live stream the final 375 putts, and this is what happened. Like, can you let me know in chat if you can hear me okay? I'm trying to use the AirPod. There we go. Drop, drop. Yes. That's the sweet spot. Just right of center. Low right likes to catch as well. That's my review of the Black Hole Pro. Drop. We're on fire. Let's go. Ten. All right. Here's I got something. I got something for you, chat. Will I make? the 10,000th putt. All right, this is it, everybody. This is the last 15 putts. Unless our math is wrong. <laughs> yep, this is it. No more. Well, we got to pick up one more time after this, but. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, it's not off to a good start. Wind's picking up. Oh no. Oh no. All right, this is 10 left. 10 left, so 10. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, six was good, six was good. Five, four, three, two, Yes! <laughs> Made the last five. Let's go. That is amazing. Woo! I definitely thought I was going to choke. <laughs> yes! We're done. And you know what? It is really good to be done. Practice putting is hard enough on its own, but tracking the statistics, you're constantly getting feedback and if you're improving, that feedback feels really good. But if you're not improving and you're getting worse or you're kind of plateauing, it can be really frustrating. The other sort of psychological piece that started to come into this is every time I got better, there was more room below to get worse again. And it's kind of strange how that works. You know, if you go to a field and you're throwing for distance and you're trying to throw further and further, if you throw 500 feet once, you don't suddenly expect to throw 500 feet on every throw. But for some reason, once I reached a certain putting percentage, I never wanted that percentage to drop below that. 
and it felt almost like a failure if it did. So it was a real psychological as well as physical challenge. Now, with all that being said, I'm sure what you really want to know is that final putting percentage. So let's break down the numbers for just those 5,000 putts of pixels. And there we have it. My final putting percentage for the last 5,000 putts was 42.96% or 8.74% better than the first 5,000 putts. Now that eight, almost 9% difference may not seem like a lot, but I can tell you my level of confidence putting has gone leaps and bounds since we started this whole adventure. Of course, there were ups and downs and the conditions certainly played a role as well. Round 12, I should also mention, was unbelievably windy. Not that I'm trying to make excuses, but all in all, practice maybe doesn't make perfect, but it sure does make you better. Now we had one giveaway winner already, and we're gonna have another in just a second, but first I wanna give out some honorable mentions. So we had over 600 giveaway entries, and one person thought that I would actually finish with the exact same percentage as I started. I just thought that was interesting. More interesting than that, and perhaps a little disrespectful, rude, I don't know, 18 people guessed that I would get worse I don't know how you get worse at something by doing it 10,000 times, but I'm happy that I proved you all wrong. On the flip side, 11 of you thought that my final putting percentage would be over 75% from 27 feet, which is either flattering or kind of crazy. I'm not sure which, but let me tell you, if I got over 75%, I might not be here anymore because I'd be out on tour. Before we talk about the craziest thing about all your guesses, let's have a giveaway winner. Congratulations to Persephone Murray for guessing 42.99%. You were the closest to guessing the second percentage of 42.96%. Which takes us on to one of the craziest things to come out of this whole test. 600 plus guesses from all of you. Average them together. And that comes out to 39.74%. Which, on its own... Doesn't seem that crazy, but if we average the first 5,000 with the second 5,000, my final putting percentage was 38.59%, or only 1.15% off the average of all of your guesses. That's wild. So as a whole, you all knew exactly how good I was going to do. And with that final putting percentage of 38.59%, we must also say congratulations to Alexander Alonso for guessing 38.6% or just 0.01% off the 38.59 final percentage I had after 10,000 putts. Now, I learned a lot from this experience, but I wasn't sure how to condense all that down into something concise. So instead, I took to our Discord, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram communities to ask you all what you wanted to know that I learned from this experience. Let's dive into those questions. From our YouTube community, Martin asks, did you feel a gradual improvement over the journey or did the whole thing feel like a roller coaster of consistency? Uh, I'm assuming you meant a roller coaster of inconsistency because that's exactly what it felt like to me. Uh, there were times where I had no idea what I was doing. I felt like I was just going nowhere. Uh, there were really high highs, low lows. You know, in those sets of 15 putts, there were some where I made two. There were some where I made 12. And so it was very much a roller coaster. Also from our YouTube community, Archangel88 asks, did you change your putting style? And if so, why? Absolutely. I tried more putting styles than I can think of, but perhaps the hardest part was that sometimes my putting style would change without me really thinking about it. And then I would have to spend all this time trying to figure out like, well, what part of my form am I not getting right? Like what's not connecting? And I would have to just, I would spend so much time trying to figure that out that I would be missing putts that whole time. Now, I think regardless of my putting style, there were a few things that I identified that were really important to my routine that I will share. The rocking motion, the rocking motion that kind of helps me like get into my putt and you can see it um, kind of a little bit better on some of the live streams. I got to this point where I would just kind of count myself in, roll one, two, three, and then release the putt. 
on that fourth go. And it, it helped me to kind of like keep the rhythm of pushing off of my back foot, which felt like it was generating a lot of the power. The timing of me actually moving my arm with that, uh, with that motion, if you got it just right, the power was effortless and you could get the disc to go 50 feet rather than, you know, 27 feet or something uh, with just a little bit of, of timing. The other thing was just extending, extending that arm, following through. I think that that same, the same kind of concepts apply to your throw. Like if you get those basic mechanics, right, you hear about in every sport and every athletics thing of, you know, following through and, and, uh, I learned it in tennis. I hear it talked about in baseball and many other sports. Uh, you need those basics to be there. So once I got comfortable with those, my putting improved. From our Facebook page, Zachary had a bunch of questions. I'll paraphrase and answer a few of these. Did you still want to play rounds during these months? And if so, did you enjoy it? Uh, I mean, maybe I wanted to get out and throw, but honestly, I didn't have time. So I, I just kept putting. Most of my free time went to putting and you know, that's after all the other stuff that we had going on with events and stuff. So I, d I wanted to play, but I didn't try to make time for it either. Another one of his questions, do I expect to retain that increase in putting percentage? I certainly hope so. I guess we'll see. Another question from YouTube, Nicholas asks, you mentioned that the better you got, the more you worried about failure or setbacks. Did you find any strategies to improve your mental game or have any good sports psychology tools? Um, this was probably one of the hardest aspects of the whole thing. Mentally, there were so many points where I was just frustrated. And before I made that change to use 15 pixels for the second 5,000, there was, there was a point of maybe a few weeks where I didn't think I was gonna do this. I didn't think I was actually gonna finish it. Um, it, it just got really discouraging to feel like I wasn't making progress. So that switch at 5,000 was really important, like pushing through to finish that and get to a good stopping point to make that change. Um, I then immediately saw improvement using only one putter, go figure. Um, so yeah, I, I think psychologically it was difficult. Did I develop any tools or techniques to get better with that? No, the tool or technique that I had was not recording all the times I was really upset or irritated <laughs> with the process, uh, or else there would have been a lot more in this video. So uh, again, I don't recommend keeping statistics on all your putting practice. It could be uh, kind of frustrating, but then again, maybe if you do and you get used to that ups and downs of the statistics, maybe it would be good, I don't know. Lastly, from our YouTube channel, Jonathan asks, do I still have neighbors? <laughs> yes, yes, I do still have neighbors. Uh, I made sure to only putt during you know, daytime hours, usually in the evening because the sun would cast some, or my house would put some shade on the back porch, which was nice. Um, but also I put a chain suppressor on my Black Hole Pro that I got from Infinite Discs, and that helped a lot. It just wasn't as noisy as it would have otherwise been. Finally, I wanna take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have been watching and supporting our channel. Uh, whether you are of the 72% of our audience that's from the United States, or if you're part of the 28% that are watching from Sweden, Finland, Canada, Norway, Denmark, Germany, India, Estonia, the United Kingdom, Australia, Russia, New Zealand, or anywhere else, thank you so much uh, for supporting our channel. Whether you're one of our earliest subscribers or one of our latest ones, or whether you're not subscribed at all and you just like watching our content, thank you so much. You all have played a significant role in shaping the type of content that we make, and we wanna continue that. So if you have suggestions, leave a comment down below. And also comment below when and what we should do for our next milestone challenge. As excited as I am for our channel to grow, I'm kind of not looking forward to another crazy challenge, but hey, if you guys wanna see it, we'll do it. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. Last week, oh boy. What are you doing, dogs? You're trying to razz me. Oh, success. <laughs> 10,000 is just kind of like an unfathomably large number. And like, on the one hand, it's like so many.
but like YouTube, YouTube is such a crazy thing that like in some, in some respects, it's like hardly anything. But I'd like to think in disc golf it's a lot, and I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> so excited! I'm gonna try and make some putts. Starting now. Okay. Come on. Yes. If you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.